Hi, I'm Heidi Varnes, and I am the Director of Family Support with The Cure Starts Now. And I'm Trent Hummel. I'm a pediatric neuro-oncologist at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Dr. Hummel, can you tell me the difference between a shunt and ETV? Yes. So both a shunt and an ETV, also known as an endoscopic third ventriculostomy, which is a fancy word of saying, fancy way of saying poking a hole in the third ventricle. Okay. But both shunt and ETV are ways of creating what's called CSF or cerebral spinal fluid diversion. Meaning when you have hydrocephalus or pressure on the brain, for whatever reason, you want to create a pathway that allows the cerebral spinal fluid to flow freely. A shunt is basically like an off-ramp that allows the, the cerebral spinal fluid to shunt off of that. And similarly, an ETV does the same thing. It is important to note that both a shunt and an ETV do not correct the underlying cause of hydrocephalus, be it a tumor or any other cause of hydrocephalus, typically. So a shunt is something that you are putting <clears throat> inside of your body, whereas an ETV is a more natural way of releasing the pressure? Yes, a shunt is using tubing that basically goes from the space in your brain down usually into your belly. It's called a, a VP shunt. That's the most common shunt. Whereas an ETV is simply a procedure that the neurosurgeon does by poking a hole into the third ventricle, which relieves the pressure. Okay. Can, it, can <clears throat> any patient qualify for an ETV? So it depends on the neurosurgeon's comfort level the anatomy of that patient, and one of the one of the issues with ETVs or endoscopic third ventriculostomies is they can close. Mm -hmm. So after you put a hole put a hole in the third ventricle, they can close up, and if they close up, then you may have to have a shunt. So I would encourage you to ask your neurosurgeon which one he or she prefers to do. Yeah, that's that's a good point. <clears throat> 